Hello everyone, my name is Sae and welcome to today's episode on drawing botanical art. We're going to be using a watercolor pencil and watercolor tube to uh, create a beautiful drawing of a streptocarpus plant. Now, if you haven't used this technique before, don't worry. I'll take you step by step and you're going to have a lot of fun and maybe it becomes your new favorite technique. Streptocarpus is known as Cape Primrose. They're native to South Africa and uh, are part of the Gisneriate family, so cousins of African violets. They grow in similar conditions and once they start blooming, they'll keep going on for a long time. I've taken these pictures at different conventions I've gone to for AVSA, African Violet Society of America, and uh, this year it was held in Texas. I wanted to create some cards for the goodie bags that each attendee gets and because it was Houston I decided to go with a Texas theme. What better plant than Streptocarpus Texas Hot Chili? Hybridized by my dear friend Dale Martins while she lived in Texas. I had seen a glorious one grown by BJO, my dear friend, at the 2018 Buffalo Convention. So that was the plant I was going to use as reference. The supplies you're going to need for this drawing is a bunch of reference pictures that I've posted on my blog, a sketch pad, some graphite pencils, some transfer paper, watercolor paper, as well as watercolor brushes. And last but not least, watercolor pencils as well as tubes of watercolor. The process we're going to follow is first you're going to start with a rough sketch which you use as an underlay to create your final drawing and from there you'll transfer it onto watercolor paper where you'll use the pencils to draw the leaves, wet them with a brush to get the watercolor effect and paint the blooms with the tube paint. The details will come in with color pencil at the very end. The paper that I recommend for your sketch pad is this translucent visual bond, which is great because it allows you to see what's underneath it. We'll start out by sketching the flower pot. And for this, I just use a simple profile and then put two ellipses. And next, we'll start by putting out the leaves. Pay attention to the picture on the left because you'll see arrows where when I start drawing particular leaves. Since my goal is really to capture the essence of the plant and not really produce an exact copy, I'm going to take bits and pieces and draw them to create a unique plant of my own. And here you can see I draw, give the basic shape of the leaves and I notice, oops, the flower pot is a little short so I'll just add some to it and I'll use pictures for reference. And again, you can see as I just place circles for where the blooms are supposed to go. And I really put it in roughly. The idea is to get a nice composition that looks balanced. So I'm just placing different elements and adding blooms to make it look full. And I'm pretty much done with my basic. I'll use it as an underlay and you can see how it comes through onto the next sheet. Saves me a lot of work. Now I can go and construct individual blooms. And for that, I start by putting the center line for each petal. And then just drawing it around it. Keeping in mind that these are natural things, so they're not stiff free-flowing, they've got flaws, but essentially you're really trying to capture the feeling of it so make sure proportion to leaves are correct, it's got some nice details and you can see how I pull out certain blooms and put them on. I typically use Strathmore or Canson watercolor paper. Uh, it's not high-end but it works for what I do. And um, I'll use masking tape to tape my drawing to keep it securely while I transfer the drawing. 
check out my video three ways to transfer drawings where it will show you how to use transfer paper and some other techniques of um, transferring your drawing onto the watercolor paper once it's done I'll use kneaded rubber eraser to pull out the extra bits of graphite so my drawing doesn't get muddy and now it's fun time Watercolor pencils look exactly like pencils until you brush them with water. That's when they turn into watercolor. So what I do is I go through my set and I try to find the colors that match the drawing that I want to make. But the next best thing is also getting a plant and looking at all the little details. I have a similar looking strap and um, going through and looking at the way the leaves are, the way the blooms come out of the uh, leaf stems, uh, how the sides of the leaves have this wrinkly effect, and also the texture. Here are a couple other plants I have in my collection. And so now to get started, let's start by adding some texture to one of the leaves. You can see a reference picture here. I'm just going to go in and add the darker areas and when I go over it with a little moistened brush, you can see that leaving the white space between the pencil actually gives that nice reflective look. So without copying it, I try to duplicate the texture and again, like what we did the in the sketch, it's not about copying it. It's about capturing the essence. So once I put down some watercolor pencil, I'll go in and wet it and it helps me control the overall texture. It might take a few tries, but once you get the hang of it, you can pretty much start making leaves as you go along. And another interesting technique I use is for things that are close to me, I add, use a lot of detail. And, but as the leaves get further away, I really don't put that much detail into it. And you'll see really, really lighter. Just the fact that the leaves that are further away are much lighter gives that sense of distance. Plus, it reduces a lot of the work that you have to do, right? It's only add detail on the really close things. Now I did try to create the bloom with um, color pencil, but I just wasn't getting the intensity that I wanted. And uh, that's why I switched to the tubes. I took my picture to the craft store and uh, got colors that matched the picture. Let's so see, it's, I did try it, but it just wasn't working for me. And you can see, I'll just go through. I'm using um, a brown ochre kind of paint for the stalks. And again, I don't make everything wet at the same time. I'll draw the stalks, I, I'll put the water on it, let it dry a little bit, and then add it. Work on the leaves. And here you can see, I got the tube paint and I'm going over, wow, look at that color. Now that is the color I was after. The color pencil just doesn't work. And so when you're using the tube paint, depending on how much water you add to it, you can get lighter colors and you can have some really interesting techniques. Again, I make the ones that are further away light once you wet a certain area, 
you can just add a little touch of color to get that variation. And for the flower pots, that's the last thing that goes in. In hindsight, I should have made it a little bit bigger. It kind of looks a little bit like a carrot, but uh, that's always hindsight for you, eh? But I used a warm gray for this. And you can see, as soon as I wet it, it just gets really interesting. I ended up going in with color pencil and touching up just a little bit to get the finer details. But all in all, I was very happy. Well, I hope that you enjoyed this episode and it inspires you to create beautiful botanical art. Now, if you enjoyed this episode, please don't forget to give me a thumbs up, follow me on Facebook and Instagram, and subscribe to my YouTube channel, and press that little bell icon at the bottom because that's going to notify you when I post uh, new videos. Uh, happy drawings, and I'll see you next time.